Hello traders and welcome to a new Bitcoin price prediction video of mine. So in today's video we will be using three different kinds of analysis to project where Bitcoin's price will likely be in the future. Uh, so if you didn't see my video that I post on December 22nd, I posted a Bitcoin price prediction video where I had said uh, the price was going to be likely moving in a head and shoulders formation with a move up to the 0.618 and then a continuation of the downtrend. And that is what had occurred. Uh, okay, so now let's do a February 5th price analysis of Bitcoin. So to start off with, what are the three categories I'm going to be using and that I do use for long-term analysis? Uh, I use, I'm going to use technical analysis, which is going to be talking about Elliott Wave Theory and Fibonacci's. And I'm then going to use a volume analysis, which is going to be telling us about transactions. Um, not like not like blockchain transactions, but like uh, volume transactions. And then I'm going to uh, talk about sentiment, which is looking at position data. Uh, and then after sentiment is going to be getting into the super long-term trends. And then after we talk about the very long-term trends, we're going to end the video with likely levels of resistance if this becomes an uptrend. So it's going to be an all-inclusive price prediction video, free of cost, for now. <laughs> Alright, so let's get deep into all of this. So to start off with, let's talk about the Elliott Wave Theory aspect of it. We can see that Wave 1, uh, Wave 2, Wave 3, Wave 4, Wave 5. Uh, one interesting characteristic of these waves is we can see that Wave 1 is equal to Wave 3 in percent, which was equal to Wave 5 in percent. 40, 49%, 46%, and 46% here. That is pretty bullish because I would think that these three percents being equal is something that's quite possible and then that would begin the uptrend. Uh, the only issue I have with, with what's going on here is typically you're going to see two waves equal to each other and then the third wave is going to be an extension. We don't really see that happening here. Uh, we see really the opposite, which means that I think there's a high probability that this is going to become the beginning of the uptrend. Uh, I'm going to show you guys exactly why I think that. But uh, if price does move lower, it would probably be because, be because of Elliott Wave Theory, that these would be 46%, and that this might be something around 1.618 of this uh, downward, which uh, by my math would be around 4K to 5K. So we might even see support down to 4,000 uh, up to 5,000. But that being said, I still believe that 6650 is the bottom that we had seen here. Um, yeah. One last thing, I'm going to talk about why are these waves the way they are. We can see that wave uh, wave 2 went up 61.8%, 61.8%, uh, wave, wave uh, 4 went up 38.2% uh, right here, as you can see, almost to 50. That's typically what you're going to see in a wave 2 and wave 4 formation. Where wave 2 goes up 61.8, and then wave 4 goes up 38.2. Uh, so that is conforming to traditional LA wave 3 right there, which is telling me that this is likely a market bottom. All right, so that's a lot of Elliott Wave Theory stuff. Let's go into uh, the next kind of analysis. So we still have here, imagine that this is our Wave 2 and this is our Wave 4, remember from the previous chart. Let's now plot Fibonacci extensions to find likely levels of support and the beginning of the uptrend. Well, okay, if we plot the Fibonacci from uh, wave, wave 2 from here to here, we can see that the level indicated was 6650.9. Let's look at what the low of this was. The low of this market was 66.51. 66.59, 50.9 was projected from wave 2's 1.618, and 66.51 was what had occurred. So it was actually 99.9999% correct. Uh, yeah, Fibonacci's are quite powerful, as you can probably see. And even crazier than that, let's look at wave 4. Uh, we know that we, the 1.618 just got hit for uh, wave uh, 2, which is very bullish, showing me that that's probably going to be the beginning of the uh, uptrend. Let's look at wave 4 now. Uh, wave 4, if I'm going to plot that guy. Yep, cool. Uh, 161.8 just got hit as well. Perfect. At 6,900, price hit it, rejected it, and went back up. Okay, so another 161.8 getting hit. And now let's look at this mini little retracement upward, but it's still important. 161.8 just got hit there as well. That's three major 161.8 extensions of corrective moves that just got hit. Uh, if that's not bullish, I, I don't know what it is. I, I, I mean, that, that's very, very bullish uh, is basically what I'm saying. 
All right, so beyond the, the cool fib thing, um, let me actually just cheat and go a little bit ahead of time. I said I was going to do this at the end of the video, but I wanted to show you guys this now. Let's plot the all time for uh, Bitcoin. Let's plot from uh, zero up to uh, 20K that it occurred on Bitfinex. Perfect. So we can see that this, uh, well, yep, awesome, uh, zero. The 61.8 of the weekly uh, Fibonacci retracement just got hit. Uh, and I'm going to talk about this, why, and what exactly this means, because this is going to get pretty cool. Uh, in about four or five minutes, I'm going to talk about this. But uh, all you need to know now is that this conforms also with the Fibonacci extensions, that this level will likely become support, and price will likely move upward. Uh, because a major 61.8 like that getting hit, I mean, that's that's a very good sign. Um, yeah, so just more confluence for FIBs. Let's now talk about volume. We had a major volume spike at the beginning of wave two. We had a major volume spike at the beginning of wave four. And now we have a major volume spike here, here, and here, as evidenced by these volume spikes. Uh, that typically is what's going to occur at the end of a downtrend. Major volume as many retail traders sell off, many institutions buy in. Um, and yeah, so I think that the market's likely to move upward based on volume. If we see strong continuation volume, uh, continuation volume is after the market reverses, you want to see strong volume in a new direction. So if we see the market moving up on very high volume, you know, like something like, um, I think this is a pretty good example of volume above the moving average, basically. If we see volume above the moving average moving upward, then that would be quite bullish, and I would be confident that this is the, probably the beginning of the uptrend. So yeah, volume, bullish. Fibonacci is bullish. Elliott Wave Theory mostly bullish. One thing that is not bullish is sentiment. <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, if we look here, sentiment, uh, for those who don't know, is just the representation of how many Bitcoin are held in long, the green line, and short positions, the red line. Uh, you might be wondering, wait, you can't short. Well, Bitfinex is what offers this data, and Bitfinex is an international exchange where the users can short and do uh, margin trading as well. So that's why we have this short data indicated by the red. We see that there's a massive increase in people who bought and a massive, and a not as massive increase in people who shorted. Typically, at the at a market bottom, you're going to see a lot of people who are selling off or the green line going down like that. Um, that did not happen here. Instead, we had a lot of people who bought back in. Uh, I still am confident that this is likely a bottom, but what I would like to see is shorts beginning to increase and longs beginning to decrease. If we do see that, then I'm pretty confident that is going to be the beginning of an uptrend. Because uh, as, as sad as it sounds, uptrends are fueled on the losses of um, retail traders. So what that means is retail traders selling at a very bad price and then the market moving upward is going to cause them to, in the future to want to buy back in because of the fear of missing out and the fear of missing the profits that they had missed before by selling at a bad price that's going to begin to fuel the uptrend higher and higher. Uh, so that's why I need to see the red line increasing and the green line decreasing. Because that's going to show us that a lot of uh, money is flowing into the market. Uh, going off of the money flowing to the market, I know I, I did say that this doesn't look fantastic. I gave my bad news of sentiment of this increase is likely a, a bad sign. There's a good sign. Uh, the good sign is that both increased. When both longs and shorts are increasing, that shows that there's a high amount of open interest for the current trend. So when we see the market begin to move upward, and then we see these big increases in longs and shorts, that's showing us that a lot of people are entering positions when the market state was changing. Uh, and if a lot of people are entering positions now, then we can expect that demand is probably beginning to pick up. And if demand begins to continue to pick up here and stays high, and both of these increase, that's a pretty good sign that money's flowing into Bitcoin. Uh, from the US dollar, of course. Uh, so yeah, so both increasing, great. Just green increasing, not great. That's sentiment in a nutshell. All right, so now this part of the video, we've gone over just regular Bitcoin price predictions. Um, what we're gonna do next is the super long-term analysis, and then we're gonna end the video with resistance points that if you do, I'm not telling you to buy this, but if you know if you do buy this, certain places you could potentially sell at because they might be good resistance. But before we talk about that, let's talk about something a little interesting. Let's go back to the one week. So I teased at this before. So as, as I had showed you, the 61.8 retracement uh, had occurred right here, and now we're expecting the price is likely to move higher. 
Well, if the price likely does move higher, this move will probably be conforming just as well to Elliott wave theory. And what that means is that this is likely a wave one. This is likely a wave two because it retraced 61.8. What that means is wave three is typically going to be 1.6 weight of, of wave one, right? Uh, so what would 1.618 of wave one be? Well, that would be $20,000, 20,000 times 1.618. So let me show that here. 20,000 times 1.618 is 32,360. The low here was 6650. So plus 66, 6650, that would be 39,000. Um, so I would expect around 40,000, 39 to 40,000 would be significant resistance for Bitcoin. I know that sounds crazy and far off and you know, it's completely natural to have that reaction. But let's talk about how exactly the market can move in, the, in that direction. And to do that, let's talk about the one day, the one day chart. So I'm expecting again, like I had said, this uptrend, that this is likely to become an uptrend. If price does move up uh, beyond resistance, we would expect that it would probably move in a manner of a 1.618 extension. That's typically what's going to occur. If it did move in a 1.618 extension, it would likely move to 28,000. So if it does that, we would expect price to go up to 28,000. And typically that 161.8 of this major market move and that extension, that's probably gonna be some major resistance. And that resistance is probably gonna cause price to fall down back to the previous level of resistance, becoming future support. Uh, when price does move back down to 20K after it hits 28K, it'll probably move up to the next level of resistance, which is around 40,000. Let me draw that, and let's talk about why that number is so significant. So as I had said before with that calculation, if wave three is 1.618 of wave one, then that would be at around $40,000 for uh, the end of, um, of that wave. So that already is telling me, okay, that's quite bullish, but let's go a bit deeper. Uh, if, wave, if this is the wave that occurs, we're gonna be seeing a price movement from 66.50 all the way up to 28,000. Uh, by my math, that's around a 21,000 gain, right? So if price moves down, back to around 20,000. 20,000 plus 21,000 is around 40 to 41,000. I know this sounds like me just like throwing numbers out there, but I, I promise you that th these are not random numbers. These are Fibonacci numbers and Fibonacci ratios. Um, so I know I might not be explaining this like fantastically well about why I think 40K and 28K are gonna be good points of resistance. But um, the reason why is because of Fibonacci's and these are not just, I'm not one of those people who's just saying, oh, Bitcoin's going to 50K or Bitcoin's going to 100K next year. That's not what I'm doing here. What I'm doing here is using an age-old uh, technical analysis strategy of Fibonacci's and Elliott Wave Theory that has worked consistently for decades and using that to plot where Bitcoin's future price movement will go. So going off that, I think that this 21, I know it sounds crazy now, but this $21,000 move up to 28K will probably see resistance back down to 20K and then if this wave is equal to this wave, so remember this was wave one, and then this was wave two, and then if we see a wave three that goes up to here, within that wave three, we might see this pattern of this wave of 21,000 upward, back down to here, and then another 21,000 upward, up to around 40 to 41K, 39 to around 41K. I know that's that's super long, long term, but I just want to put that in the video because um, the ratios and Fibonacci's are lining up almost perfectly for that move to actually happen. Uh, and also I wanted to check back in this video in like two or three years to see if, if I was right. I mean, to see if price does see significant resistance at 28K and then sees major resistance and almost uh, collapse at, when it hits around 40,000. Yeah. Okay, so that's that wasn't as significant. Um, yeah. So that is the uh, sorry. So that is the major market waves that I'm expecting for the just super super long term trend. Uh, let's let's get rid of that and let's get back to reality. So I am believing that this is likely to become the uptrend, like I had said before. Uh, it, and if it doesn't, I would expect price to go around to the four to five k range. If price does begin an uptrend, I'm expecting that we see major resistance uh, at around fifteen thousand. Reason for that 15,000 is it is the 61.8 of the downtrend. 
right there, 14.8K. So 14.8 is around 15K. Uh, this level right here is probably going to see some major resistance because it's the 61.8 of this move. In the more short term, I sh would expect that this level would have um, major resistance as well, as well at around 10.5K. Uh, because this would be wave, uh, this is wave 5, if this is the bottom of the downtrend. And then we would see a 61.8 retracement of wave 5. Selling at 10.5, 10.6 probably wouldn't be a bit terrible idea. The market will probably move down a bit. And then it'll probably move back up to 15K eventually. Um, and then beyond 15K, it'll probably move above resistance to around 28K, back to resistance at around 20K, and then it will probably move up to around 40,000. So that's my prediction. We'll see what happens. Yeah, the only issue I think is that sentiment looks a little weird right now. Maybe we'll see a double bottom where price comes back here, or maybe we'll just see an uptrend. Um, but I'm pretty confident that the uptrend is going to be occurring, whether we have consolidation or just a move upward. Wow, so I know we went over a lot today. Um, just to recap, we went over Elliott Wave Theory, we went over Fibonacci's, we went over volume, sentiment, the super long term. Remember those like resistance levels that will be probably hit in a few years and resistance levels that will be hit probably in a few weeks. Of 10.5K, 15K, 28K, and 40K will be the major resistance levels that I am thinking about on uh, Bitcoin. So if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about anything, uh, feel free to leave them below. Thank you for watching.